This is Reverend Pam Gagan from the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley in Camarillo, California, uh, with our morning meditation. And this begins the day that we begin uh, meditating on the Tao, the way, being in the flow, as I say, being uh, with what is. And so the format for this will be that I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the Tao as we open up here. Then I'm going to go within and uh, within the quiet time with music underneath, we're going to meditate on one affirmation. And so there'll be a max of three affirmations after we, we're going to also relax in and connect. But after that, then we'll go within and I'll give you three affirmations uh, to think about during the day and then write down any insights that you have. So I'll begin uh, by uh, first talking just about the Tao. And uh, it was known that Lao Tzu uh, was the, uh, the book of the Tao, uh, the Tao Te Ching that Lao Tzu wrote is the largest selling book um, next to the Bible in the world. And it is known as the Tao, the book of the way, because it is a classic manual on the art of living. And I love the Tao and I love the way, <laughs> as I say. <laughs> oh boy, did I lose you? No, I didn't lose you. Yay! <laughs> so anyway, so the way uh, uh, that was um, written down in, in many times uh, poetry is the way of the Tao. And it affirms that what is bestowed on us at birth, which is called human nature, and the fulfillment of human nature is called the Tao. So the cultivation of the Tao, the planting of that seed thought in the soil that is just uh, says yes, and going and realizing that you are one with that source, that seed in that soil that supports us is the deepest form of learning. And I believe that in our meditations, uh, the Tao of who we are, the way of who we are is revealed uh, in the deepest way that we can ever uh, imagine than just walking around, not fully cognizant all the time. So the Tao is the way things are. They just are. It is the thing itself, divine source, God, Buddha nature, Krishna wisdom, Sufi unconditional love, whatever you want to call it, it is the thing itself. And we can never depart from our divinity in that knowingness, in that oneness. We are just the reflection, uh, the unique fingerprint of God in that one source, that one beingness, call it what you want. And when we... Uh, we are always there no matter what we're thinking or doing. We never depart and never are separate from our divinity, even for an instance. If we could depart from it, it wouldn't be the Tao, the way. Therefore, when we look into our own heart and respect what is unseen and unheard, we are being in the Tao, in the wave. No matter what we think we should be doing, saying, having, being, and what we are doing, saying, having, being, that is the difference. So we are always in the Tao, in the moment, but our difference is connecting and recognizing with it. So nothing is more apparent when we become one with our divinity and that hidden oneness is made manifest. And if you want to know, I believe what is uh, happening on this planet, there are so many light workers right now wanting to see the highest and best revealed. And it is in the process of shining our light into the darkness that the highest and best is being revealed in that equanimity, that humanity, and the honoring of each and every person on this planet. So when we are one with our divinity, that hidden oneness, as I said, is made manifest. And it in those, in those moments where nothing is seen, touched, felt, but yet we know that we know that we know, and it is more obvious than ever that the unseen, the metaphysical, not the physical, but the physical beingness of what we are on this planet and what we manifest comes from that physical uh, unknowing, that physical stuff, that soil, 
that when we look at it, we can manifest it in a way that is obvious, that it is now out into the seen, but it always comes from the unseen, the thing itself. Therefore, our soul pays attention to what is happening within our innermost self. And so when we begin to recognize that the innermost self is what is manifesting in the outer world, then we recognize that we are so powerful and our thoughts, the seeds we plant in that fertile soil, our thoughts, our beingness that just says yes in that fertile soil is what is manifesting. And so to know thyself, as Krishna said, is the most important thing on the planet. So the interpretation of what and that wisdom in that oneness, I believe, is is that we think we know human nature uh, and we think we know ourselves. But what if our uh, most cherished ideas are wrong? What if all suffering is the result of confused thoughts and thinking? Wouldn't it change our lives and how we see it? Of course it would. So being in touch with what we really want is more important than anything. And I, and I have a prayer partner who we're working on releasing weight. We don't lose anything. We release and open up to something greater. And it is apparent to us as we have been in uh, uh, communication in this prayer partnering that it is so much it is so much greater than what it is it is not what we're eating it's what eating us as we say so how we see life will change dramatically once we recognize that with what what is within us is so much greater so much more loving so much more forgiving so much more compassionate than we could ever imagine so we are born into the open, into the vast mind, empty of meaning, beyond thought, beyond sayings, for reality just is. It just, what is, is just is. Our human nature doesn't need to be fulfilled because it already is. It's waiting for us to open up to it. So we don't need to cultivate what is already perfect. Once we recognize that in return, of this recognition of the origin of the thing itself, the origin of all we are, already perfect. That is what manifests within us. And all of the addictions and yearnings and everything else, they fall away uh, one by one. So who we are, have we have always been, we are coming back home, as I say, in the way. And we will be there waiting for us, that soul that recognizes itself. And when you're in that oneness, what I call the mystics and everybody recognize that there is only the one, the one, the one, and that we reflect that oneness and that, that uh, road to nirvana uh, in that oneness, we have reached our goal already. So there is a movement toward, there has never been and never will be a movement toward or away from source. When we stay grounded and remain where we've always been, we will know it and we will know it as we recognize it and it will be like the first time we recognize it. So departing from source, departing from the love, the compassion, the oneness happens only in our mind because it's always waiting for us there. It's an illusion, but that illusion, if we foster not the truth, but the illusion of who we are, that becomes our reality. So it is a strange dichotomy that we actually live and move and have our being in what is in our divinity, yet we think ourselves into what isn't. And then everything that what isn't takes away from what is and knowing the one divine source, call it God, Buddha, Jesus, Elohim, whatever you want to call it, it is the thing itself, Moses, Mohammed, whatever it is that you feel connected to in this oneness, it takes away from that when illusion comes in and truth to power leaves. So we take a detour from time to time on the path and we seem to get lost in our imagined wanderings and wonderings. But when we seek freedom and the sweetest thing of life happens, we know that beyond anything that we are experiencing right now, that when we dig deep, 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 deep into our thoughts, 
that rich soul of the mind and the heart working together. It's about paying attention to what is happening in that fertile soil. And so within our innermost self connected to the outer self, we believe that we become in touch with that which cannot be seen, that which sometimes is not known to ourselves, but has been known about us since the beginning of time. And it becomes obvious as the seeing in the seen world that when our mind is free of its monkey thoughts and mind and jumping all around and negativity, it becomes our own fulfillment, that source, that love, that compassion, that knowing. And we, as we continue to reveal the unique fingerprint of God that we are. So we are that oneness and nothing can ever take us away from that. Only our mind thinking illusionary thoughts that really are not the truth. So now we're going to connect like we always do. We're going to connect and we're going to take our, 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 just see that light coming right down through our crowns as we relax in for the rest of this meditation. And we're going to feel that energy going right down our crown chakra. And it's going down the crown to the third eye, down to our jaw, the slack jaw, as I say. As we just relax in. And it goes down to our throat, opening up our throat. And then down to our shoulders opening up the shoulders and going down the back vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae and then coming down the arms relaxing the upper arms going down to the elbows down to the lower arms down the wrists and out the fingers of our hands and when we put our thoughts there we can feel that energy flowing out the fingers that energy coming right back up the arms the shoulders going back down the neck and sometimes it's the neck and the shoulders and the back. We carry so much tension in those areas. So vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae, just relaxing in. Each vertebrae just relaxing in, relaxing in your chair. And coming right around and wrapping around the heart chakra. And opening up that heart chakra. And in the heart chakra, we see that lotus and then sits in the middle of the lotus is the divinity that you wish to connect with. It could just be the flower itself, the beauty, the wisdom of life in that flower. Or it could be something even greater. A, de a deity could be there.
Jesus, Moses, a friend, an angel, coming to reveal to you an innermost desire, an innermost thought of who you are. And so now that energy, now the heart chakra, the beautiful emerald green goes back down and around, around all the way to the, to the solar plexus, beneath the heart chakra, the beautiful yellow, and then down into our sacral chakra, wrapping around the body, the band of orange, and then down into our root chakra, between our legs, that ruby red root chakra that grounds us in this physical world, because I always say we are here to be physical beings as well as human beings, not doings, but being who we are and what we are learning from this physical world. That is why we came here. We came to love and forgive and be the divine in action, in manifestation and yet grounded in this body for all of its lessons that it is offering us. So that energy going right down and relaxing the hips, the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet, the toes, and going right back down, right down into that, that ground, that middle earth. And there you are grounded by something. You can tap your light and be grounded by something else. Like a tree branch or someone holding on to that branch, onto that light. And then feel that energy coming, just surging right back up through the feet, the ankles, the calves, the knees, the thighs. Coming right back up, shooting right up through the entire body, in and around and surrounding us, that light just surrounding us. Now we're gonna breathe into that light, that source. And again, call it what you want. I call it God, which is synonymous with love with me. So on the in-breath, God is. And on the out-breath, I am. And two more now silently. And now let us just sit in the silence. And I'll be giving three affirmations during this for you to contemplate during your day. But right now, just sit in the silence of the beauty of this life and all it offers.
So in this moment of connection, I am choosing to explore and enjoy living the great mystery that which cannot be named the Tao. I am exploring this mystery. I am now the happiness that I seek. I know that there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. Today, I pay attention to my inner callings and bring my fingerprint of uniqueness to everything I undertake. So as I come back, I leave here today energized, excited, and open and receptive. to emptying out that which no longer serves me in my mind, my heart, my soul. And yet it is all providing, opening up to new ways of being. It is inexhaustible.
as I go on this deepest form of learning path. I am my divinity. I have never departed, as I've said. I continue to look in my heart and my mind and love and respect what is unseen and unheard. My soul is paying attention to my innermost self. I go with what is. And so as we come back and we're feeling our bodies in the chair, our minds and hearts open to exploring that mystery. I call today good and very good. And I bless this out. Namaste. Peace out. I love each and every one of you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a bliss, blessed day.